All right. Welcome to part three on you going to burn in hell and that too going to burn. Part three. You going to burn in hell and that too going to burn. What does that mean? What does that mean? You going to burn in hell and that too going to burn. What does that mean? This is class. This is not church. It's not a monologue. You don't just come here, sit down, fall asleep. It's a dialogue, curriculum. You take time out. You go back over what has been taught, cross-examine, make sure it is right, or just do what other people do. Go to somebody's church, listen, sit down and be lost. And your loss, guess what you're going to do? You're going to burn in hell. And that loss is going to burn too. Because you didn't take the time out to study. To show yourself approved, like the Apostle Paul stated. You have no excuse. You can't blame it on your parents. You can't blame it on the preacher man. You can't blame it on the, you can't blame it on the biblist. You got to blame it on the person the reflection that shows itself in the water, you. <laughs> yeah, we live today. We're going to finish this. Part, you want part three? Let me make this clear. Part three. You're going to burn in hell and that too going to burn. So what y'all remember about part one and two? Try to remember. Hell is down under. Hell is down and under? Beneath. Beneath. Okay. I like that. What else? A place of fire. A place of fire. You understand me? And torment. The, the what? The abyss. The abyss. That's right. The abyss. Sorrow. Fire. You understand me? Pain, trouble, no mercy. That's what hell is. Some of it anyway. How you doing today? Welcome to Study with Grace. This is a Bible study of biblical truth. Where we go in and dissect and dispensate the scriptures, Bible chapter and verse dispensated Brittany say hell is deep it's real deep and remember what we talked about in part one what we talk about in part one y'all talk about what we talked about in part two what about part one Hades what about Hades and Shoel that was a place for the undead for the undead that's a place for the undead I mean the dead oh the dead okay the place where the dead went and the place of the Ooh. Mama, mama, say, say. She, she, look, you understand? It's a place for where the departed souls go. When you die, because you're going to die. Don't you think you're not going to die? Yes, sir, you're going to die. Everybody going to die. Ain't nobody walking the earth that was born in 1850 today, is it? Not one person. How many people? How many people is walking the earth today, born in 1900? None. That tells you and me that what? Die. Everybody gonna what? <laughs> Die. Die. You know why you sitting here trying to run from it? You're trying to ignore it. You're going to get it. Don't worry. But when you do get it, is that place going to be in hell? Because you want to entertain women and men sexually? Because that's your motivation. That's why you get dressed. Try to look good for somebody so you can possibly have sex with them. Huh? That's why you're going to hell and burning 
And that too gonna burn. Fornication. Sex before marriage. That's gonna burn. Adultery. In your heart. It's gonna burn. And you're gonna burn right along with it. Tories say a place where is punished is what hell is. And many more. Brendan say the lake of fire isn't the same as hell. Why are you thinking everything cool? Your little selfish, prideful, self-loving ways gonna send your tail to hell to burn forever. <laughs> In the ways you got gonna burn too. Don't get mad at me. Jesus spoke on this. He said the same thing. So you mad at me, get mad at Christ. I'm just repeating what the Savior said. And if you don't get this together, you're going to burn in hell. And that too going to burn. You ain't got time for nothing. This ain't no sermon. This is class. Hell is a place designed for the devil and his angels. It's designed for the devil and his angels. Remember, we talked about in part two, last study, that God don't get no pleasure of burning folks. He don't, he, that ain't pleasurable for him. You think he happy? He get, he throwing a party because he get to see you burn? Valencia said hell is full of demons. Absolutely. And it's full of people. Everything a game. You ain't got no time for nothing. You got no excuse. You can have a bunch of excuses for the next man, the next the man sitting next to you. But when you're in front of the king, excuse is over. And it's gonna hurt his heart to send you in the eternal flame. Because he said he has no pleasure in punishing the wicked. But turn from your sins. And sin is what gets you in hell. Who disagree? Is that technically what you what was in here or was it not accepting the the question is, you sin every day. Is not accepting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ send you to hell or the sin? What do y'all think? We went over this. If you don't accept Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, the one that atoned for the sexual immoral, the fags, the uh, whoremongers, the sorcerers, the the, the uh, idolaters. If you don't get your sins atoned for, then the whoremonger, the liar, because that's what you are. If you want for Jesus Christ, what we all live. So don't get it twisted. We all part of that list somewhere. Everybody in here done lied. The liar. I know I need me a redeem. I'm just as filthy as y'all. But see, the spirit of God gave me the truth to give it to you. And you can bypass hell, bypass the lake of fire by accepting Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, you accept that all that idolatry, lying, fornication, adultery. What's the more? Whoremonger. What's the more? Murderers. Thieves. All that get blotted, blotted clean. From 
the blood of Jesus Christ. And you did nothing. That's how much God loved us. He's trying to save us from this place called hell, which is designed and made for the devil and his angels, his fallen angels, not us. But you will be a part of it if you don't get this thing together. So we're on part three, and we're going to pick up where we left off at. We're talking about hell. You should have a clear understanding so far about hell. You should have a clear understanding on who's going to be in hell, where it's at, right? What kind of place it is, the abyss of hell. That is the side pit. That's why I drew it to the side. But it got a lid on it. So, Jesus talk about hell. People say, well, some actual scholars say that there ain't nobody burning in hell right now. They say that people are being reserved until the final punishment then burned. And they say nobody in hell burning right now. That's a lie from the devil. And if you believe that, <laughs> hopefully you don't open your eyes one day and realize the truth. Because they know the truth. People are burning right now in hell. And I'm going to show it to you in scripture. You understand me? They burning because they wanted to knock her off. They spent their whole life trying to have sex. They didn't spend their life trying to talk about Christ. Tell people about the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't try to live their life according to the way Christ said doing the commandments. All they cared about was having sex. Call it straight tool. I'm going to knock at your door. You understand me? Turn the channel. Don't mean, don't mean nothing. You, go ahead. I'm still here. I see it. You understand me? Can nobody tell you nothing? All you do is entertain your flesh. You attach to your flesh. You don't even try not to be attached from your flesh. But you claim Jesus. Your lips talk, but your heart is far away. In hell, you're going to burn. And that too going to burn. Somebody need to tell you. I'll be the one to do it. You teach about money, prosperity, gifts, have all these different things. <laughs> we, heard, we heard them say uh, on the thing, you don't need God for that. If you're trying to get a house and a car and all that, you don't need God for that. You need God to get you a house and cars. Plenty of people got houses and cars without God. That's me tell me. That's why you tithing, giving money. You don't need God for that. That's why you're going to burn in hell. And your cars and houses. Because you don't accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You don't. And that's why you believe people ain't in hell burning right now. I'm going to read y'all a story in scripture to show you that hell is real. Hell exists and people in hell are burning right now. Who don't believe people in hell burning right now? Have you ever studied, studied the hell to even know that? Or y'all just going based on what I said? See, look at you. Study. Study. We, all, we are all charged and called and, and commanded to study, to show ourselves approved. All of us, not just the biblicists. I know you ain't never sat down in front of no biblicists. It's going to get real when you sit down in front of a biblicist. A scholar, inspired by and moved only through the Holy Spirit. So here's what they did. They took a story in the Bible where Jesus talks about hell, people, a person burning right now. 
and they flip the story around and call that story a parable. All right. So we're going to read where Jesus talked about an event that happened in hell. And then you let me know if you think it's a parable. Let's go to Luke. Let's see. Before we go, Tori said, will the dead be judged during judgment day or 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 have they already been once they have died? It's a good question. Tori basically asking when somebody died, are they judged right then? Or do they got to wait till judgment day? What y'all think? Wait till judgment day? So you got to be judged before you go to heaven or hell? No. No, because the undead rise, right? Jesus. I mean, the dead rise, right? For a judgment Jesus. day. In, in, part, judgment. in part two, you said that uh, there's, there's people are already burning in hell. So, yeah. and then you said uh, with the white chair, with the white chair of judgment, that they'll right. be taken out, or uh, right throne judgment, they'll be taken out, and it'll be judged, and then it'll be cast into the lake of fire where uh, death and, um, what's the name? Is, is washed away in the lake of fire. All right. You say you think they judge twice? Well, they only judge once, and that judgment is for the lake of fire. It's for the lake of fire. You are already condemned when you don't have the blood atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ to blot you clean. So you are automatically condemned, an enemy, automatically. That's why when you die, you go to hell. Well, you burn the temporary spot to hold you over until when? What day? Judgment, judgment day. That temporary spot, it's like going to the city jail. Well, loose air. So you go to Lulu and you sit down there until your court date. You're still in jail, though, to usher you off into the real jail, prison. Hell is jail. Prison is the lake of fire. Solitary confinement. 23 hour lockdown. You get showered with the water hose. I've seen that before. Some jails, they don't even let you come out. They, the guards get the water hose for the shower and just spray you. That's your shower. <laughs> That's a good question. So let's read the book of Luke, chapter 16. Verses 19 through 31. And let's hear the story that Jesus talked about. And you tell me if this is a parable. Because a lot of people say, this is not a parable. I mean, this is a parable. Let's just see. There was a rich man who would dress in purple and fine linen. Feasting lavishly every day. But a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, was lying at his gate. <laughs> he longed to be filled with what fell from the rich man's table, but instead the dogs would come and lick his sores. One day the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus at his side. Father Abraham, he called out. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus to the dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this flame. Son, Abraham said, remember that during your life you received your good things. This is when Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here while you're in agony. Besides all this, a great chasm has been fixed between us and you so that those who want to pass over from here, you cannot. Two, those who want to pass over from here to you cannot. Neither can those from there cross over to us. Father, he said, then I beg you to send him to my father's house because I have five brothers to warn them so that they won't also come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. But he told them, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, 
They will not be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Who's that talking? Jesus Christ. That's who we're talking. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Savior, the hope of glory. <laughs> <laughs> now what do y'all think do y'all think that that's Jesus telling a story about something a fictitious story about something that could possibly be happening or is Jesus telling a real live event that's happening right then when he said it That was live? Then why people say it's a parable? Because it's most because, because Jesus spoke in parables. Because Jesus spoke in parables? Yeah. So they were they ain't gotta be a parable. It, 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 it could be live talking, they you know, in the actual world. I I agree with y'all. It's most definitely a real event. He said that right now. He ain't free. That was over 2,000 some years ago. Years ago. Boy been burning for 2,000 some years. Still in it. He gonna get a, a brief relief if God give him relief the day he step in front of the great white throne for judgment. And then he'll be judged off his works. Then he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> that is not a parable. And I'm going to prove it to you. No, Jesus was telling the story about the guy Lazarus talking to Abraham. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So when it is judgment day and just they do get redemption, is that really one of those the words of heaven? What? Anybody in hell, they not redeemed. Ain't no redemption for them. When you're in front, of, if if you wake up one day and you see yourself in front of a great white throne, it's over. Just know if you do this and you see a great white throne, you should go and just bang. I'm out of there. <laughs> God's people don't stand in front of a great white throne we stand in front of jesus there he will be issuing out rewards to the saints actually that we actually we are we get judged before the judgment day we get judged at the rapture and we stand before christ saved and all happy getting judged with a fire next to I don't want to get into heaven right now. Y'all gonna make me get into heaven. <laughs> a fire gonna be right there. And Jesus gonna be judging the people, us, the saints. And whatever's, everything will get tossed in the fire. And whatever's good, gonna make it through. Whatever's bad, gonna burn up. And if you've been unfaithful, you Christian, the Bible teaches how he disciplined the saints who are unfaithful, you know, not being invited to the wedding party. I'm not getting to that right now. We're going to keep going. We'll talk about having another study. So I agree that this event is live. This is a live event. Hell is real. People are there right now. If you go to a Bible software, it don't matter what software you use. Right, I use a Bible um, software called eSword or Logos, right? And if you type the word in parable, right, it'll bring up every verse that has the word parable in it. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to let y'all see what I'll be doing, right? And you'll notice that every time you see the word parable, it's Jesus talking, telling us this is a parable before he's tell a story 
Every time. Every time Jesus say a, say a parable, he let us know this is a parable. Then he tells a story. Y'all aware of that? Every one of them, not some, every last one. Jesus telling the story about the, 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 the rich man in hell. He didn't say it's a parable. Why all the other ones he say a parable, but not this one. All the parables in the Bible that Jesus spoke of, Jesus said, this is a parable. But all of a sudden, this one not. But you want to claim to be a parable. Nah. It's a real live event. If it was a parable, Jesus would have said it's a parable like everything else. So I'll give you some scriptures on how he said it's a parable. I'll give you a couple of them. Matthew 13 and 18, KJV. Download the application E, sword. E as an elephant, sword. Pay the money, things like $4. Show, use your Bible app, study. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. Who's that talking? Jesus. Then you let us know it's a parable. Let's keep going. Go. Luke 8 and 11. Luke 8 and 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. What's the parable? The seed is the word of God. I ain't making this up, Emma. Let's go to Luke 6 and 39. I'm going to show you. I'm going to beat you down with scripture in the correct dispensation. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into this? Matthew 13 and 24. Every time our King, our Savior, our Lord, our God, spoke parables he told us it's a parable another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field matthew 13 31. another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field matthew 13 33. <laughs> Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto Levi, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was led. Matthew 13, 34. All these things Jesus um, all these things spake Jesus unto the most to the parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Matthew 13, 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came in, came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. <laughs> huh? So you tell me that that this is a doggone parable? How dare you disrespect our king? How dare you? Oh, you want me to go to Luke? You want to see what he said in Luke since I gave a verse in Luke? That's what you want? <laughs> well, you know what? Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke 5 and 36. No sense of playing around. You said yourself in the other book. Go to where he was talking about the man. Let's see if he said it there. All right. Let's go to Luke 5 and 36. Okay. And, he spake a par uh, and he spake also a parable unto them. No man put it a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new make it a rent, and the piece was that, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreed not with the old. Luke six and thirty-nine. No sense of playing around with y'all today. Got it. And he spake a parable unto them. That's what we just did. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? You read it though. I did Luke eight. I did Luke 6. But what about, what about Luke 12 and 16? And 
he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. Don't let nobody tell y'all that verse, that story Jesus told about the man in hell when he lifted his eyes up, he was in hell, that that's a parable. I got plenty of more I can give you in the book of Luke. Plenty of more. That's a real story, Alexis. That dude, that rich man, he was rich. He was on fine linen. You know what that means, right? You don't know what linen is? Let me teach. Fine linen. Draped up. Did y'all say that? Dripped. <laughs> Clean. Fresh. Fresh J's. Had tilted. You understand me? Nails done. Toes done. Yeah. Bundles. That's what y'all wear, right? Fine linen. Fresh. The hot girl. The hottest girl. He was rich. He didn't care about nothing but looking nice. And the Bible say, this rich guy is in hell being tormented and burning in flames. Your motive is get to the money. He got to the money. He was rich. And him and his money burning in hell. <laughs> huh? You gonna burn in hell? And that too gonna burn. You gonna burn in hell? Huh? Let's look how Jesus described hell. I wanna see what the king said. You feel me? Let's go over to Mark chapter 9, verse 45. Because it's only right if we discuss what the king said about hell. I don't see, I don't see what Jesus, you know, I don't care about nobody else. I don't care about what Paul said, Peter, John. Right. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. <clears throat> it is better for thee to enter hell, into hell, into life, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quit. Woo! Unquenchable. Can I use that word? Yeah. Let me spell it. Unquenchable. Watch that. Look at that, Joshua. Bam! You understand me? Jesus said hell is unquenchable. Y'all on the phone all day and night, lusting. Don't nobody know if it's a boy or a girl. No telling what it is on the phone. You can't call it a human today. <laughs> it's unquenchable. Jesus said. You know, something unquenchable means you can't, it can't be distinguished. I mean extinguished. You know, when you're thirsty, you take that drink quench that thirst, that don't exist there. Let's go to Mark 9 and 48. Just three, three verses down. It's Jesus talking. Where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Where, the, where the, worm, the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Quick, what's the worm? Quick. What's the worm? <laughs> Jesus said, talking about hell, where the, the ooh. Ooh, nice. Nice. Where the worm died not. The worm, Jesus is speaking of, he's talking about your soul. Your soul. Your soul don't die. It just get tormented in unquenchable fire. All because you want to have sex. The little hot 10 minutes. 15 tops. 
forever? You that weak? Unquenchable? For 15 minutes? All right. Your mom and daddy can't say you there. I promise you. They be trying to say they own to you. <laughs> they can't stand. They can't take your place. They can't say, Lord, I, you know what? I'll take his place. They can't do that either. <laughs> they ain't in control then. Only one person in control. That's the king of kings. Huh? Let's go to Mark 9 and 43. We're still in the same verse. Let's go to 43. See what Jesus got to say about hell. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life man than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Into the fire that should never be quenched. What that means? Is that a, some kind of eternal fire or everlasting? Is there a difference between, uh oh, here it is. Everlasting fire? Uh oh. And eternal fire. Is there a difference between everlasting fire and eternal fire? There is no difference. There is no difference? There is no difference. No difference? Nobody else? No difference? What do you say, Veronica? Say it again. You think it's a difference? Give me a yes or no. It's a difference? All right. Let me do a little tally over here. Uh -oh. I ain't what am I doing? All right. <laughs> All right. Give me hands that says, ain't no difference between everlasting and eternal fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait. Give me hands that say there is a difference between eternal fire and everlasting fire. One. Right, do it up high so I can see you now. One, two. All right. We will cover that next Bible study. In the meantime, I'm going to give you time to figure it out, see if you was wrong or right. Well, it's for you to figure out. Figure it out. I'm, I know the answer because obviously I'm studying the, the curriculum. <laughs> Brittany say they both never end. Viewers, what do y'all think? I didn't get to ask y'all. I see y'all done came back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I got to say you're going to be in hell, y'all. Meow. Meow. Is there a difference between everlasting fire and eternal fire? We got our tallies. We ain't revisiting it. Uh, <laughs> huh? You can tell me next Bible study. All right. I will, I will text that in the group. With my other questions. <laughs> All right. Hell is a. Brittany say, put my tally up there. They both never end. That's not the. That's not the question. You gotta follow the the question, the instructions. Is there a difference between this and this? Yes or no? You, Brittany, you talking about they both never end. Put it up there. I ain't got nowhere to put it. <laughs> Hell is a tormented place where the fire is unquenchable based off of what our Savior stated from his mouth. Jesus said that it's unquenchable. Oh, she said no. All right. 
She said no. She said, is there a difference between... Oh, I, I did that backwards. All right, so we're going to do this no side. This the yes side. I'm going to erase this. Yes, no. All right. That's the no right there. All right. So, remember, the worm is the soul. The soul goes to eternal damnation and enter death, and yet it don't die. That's what the soul go. It goes to eternal damnation to die, but it don't die. Like, you can't be tormented forever if you're dead. You're going to have an unglorified body designed so you could be tormented and punished forever. All for 15 little old minutes. Know what that 15 minutes is? Devin? What's that 15 minutes? Six. Call, go straight to it. Since we're playing around. Know how I know? Because I was there too. Searching for that little 15 minutes. Where is that? I'm trying to get to it. <laughs> Give me a quick two for 10. You understand me? <laughs> you understand? But glory be to God. Who set me free. Through his blood atoning sacrifice. I started utilizing Christ, the Holy Spirit, to help me overcome sexual desires. Which was leading me into hell. So I started relying on Christ, not my own self, because I'm weak. And so when I started relying on Christ, his Holy Spirit then helped me to overcome sexual immortality, Im immorality. You understand me? Oh, Daenerys said no. Daenerys ain't no different either. Ooh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> you want to change your answer, uh, Brooke? <laughs> I got you down, Daenerys. So when I started allowing the Holy Spirit to, I started yielding to the Holy Spirit, it became much easier to flee temptation. I stopped trying to think I can overcome it. I started fleeing it. You know what flee mean? Run. <laughs> Run. And that's how I was able to overcome it. Some places I don't go. Some people I don't talk to. Because I need to flee. <laughs> so, so the soul is dying in a flame, but not dying. That's called a eternal death. Burning for all eternity. And that take place in hell. This out topic, this a bonus. But did y'all know that the Jehovah Witnesses Bibles take out those verses I just read to you that Jesus stated about hell? <laughs> They don't believe in hell. The hell does not exist and they don't believe it. Yeah, they believe everything else, but the hell part, they take out of the Jehovah's Witness time. That's right. Jehovah Witnesses do not believe in hell. In their Bible, they have omitted the hell verses, those verses in particular. They don't believe in hell. Terry just stated it. They don't believe that God has sent somebody to hell. You heard what Jesus said. I don't care what they believe. They believe in E.T. alive. Mac and me. <laughs> so we ain't entertaining that. Hell is real. Don't you think for one second it ain't. The minute you start thinking that hell is not real is the moment you on a first class rocket ship to hell. 
<laughs> Front seat, Neil Armstrong. No, but look at look at look at him. Where he going to hell? He out of there. <laughs> he gone. I love you. I don't want to see you punished and going to hell either. That's why I want to teach you the truth so you can come to the realization of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right? The main question is this. If hell is forever or eternal, then we got to get a clear understanding about the lake of fire. Right? Let's get an answer to that. And the answer is very simple. The reason why hell is eternal is because of what? Say it again. The lake of fire. Because hell is going to be what? Tossed into the lake of fire. So what is the lake of fire? That's where we're at now. What is it? Let's get to it. Revelations 19 and 20. Let's figure out what is the lake of fire. Only two people said there's a difference between eternal fire and everlasting fire. Revelations 19 and 20. Brittany said, go and look back. <laughs> they just said, get away from Doggone right, you better run. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, when which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Did y'all notice that? Did y'all see that or no? Now, did you notice how the scripture said a lake of fire versus the lake of fire? Y'all see that? Or was it just me? That's a big difference. When you go, when you say a lake of fire and the lake of fire when you say hey that's kind of like you know you got to pick one <laughs> ain't it you say a lake that's interesting y'all yeah, ready getting there ain't you this is the a Remember, we said hell ain't on earth. Hell not. Hell not on earth. Hope y'all y'all missed it. Hell not on earth. We're talking about a lake of fire. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when we talked about how many times? Where, where is it? Lake of fire is in the Bible, right? What, where is it? Four times, four verses. Y'all remember that? And all four of them times is in the book of Revelation. Right? Now, when the tossing into, meaning multiple, Brendan say meaning multiple. There's not multiple lakes of fire. But that's a good, you know, because A, right? But could the lake of fire be on earth? Didn't the sea give up his dead? <laughs> it's that what it said? The sea gave up his dead and death and Haiti. Don't let me jump the gun, y'all. Could the lake of fire be on earth? <laughs> huh? Just never know. We got to figure this thing out. Huh? You don't think there's no fire going to be set ablaze on this planet? You don't think the lake 
Greeks are going to be on fire? Could be. I don't know. We got to see what the scriptures got to say. <laughs> we got to see what the scriptures say. Now watch this. Now when, now when this tossing into a lake of fire happens, that happens right after the what? The tribulation period. Right after the seven year reign of the Antichrist. Right? Any way to say? Huh? That's what the Bible teaches. That at the end of the church age, there's going to be a rapture. Then following the rapture, it's going to be the tribulation period. And following the tribulation period, at the end of the seven year reign of the Antichrist, here comes Jesus Christ in Armageddon. Right? So Armageddon, let me write it up here. Armageddon. Is that, is that hell? No. So we ain't never associated Armageddon to hell? War? And how did the, how did the fight? What happened in the fight in Armageddon? What happened? What did Je huh? What did Jesus do in Armageddon? Set him on fire. He like dealing with fire, don't he? He say he's going to be fire in your belly. And what he say? It's a fire in you. You understand me? When Jesus come in Armageddon, guess what he's going to do? He's going to toss the beast and false prophet into a lake of fire. The Bible mentioned that the devil was cast down where? From heaven. And what else? Huh? The Bible states that the devil was cast out of heaven to earth. And also it says it was cast down to where? He was cast down to where? Earth is uh, darkened, uh, darkened. Ooh, Terry trying to light up a little bit. <laughs> Hell. This is a garbage dump. So I'll let y'all see what hell is. <laughs> huh? You finna get scriptures, don't worry. Now, when you go to the other three verses talking about the lake of fire, you'll notice something. The other three verses says the lake of fire. It's only one that says a lake of fire. The question at hand is could the lake of fire be on planet Earth? We already had it understood that hell ain't on Earth. Now let's discuss the lake of fire. The scriptures say that the sea gave up its dead. I don't want to jump the gun. Let me keep going. In these passages, the devil is let out of the abyss at the end of the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Right? Then after he did all that, deceived everybody, he was put into the same lake of fire where the beasts and false prophets are. Remember, we just read that the beast and the false prophet was tossed into a lake of fire. Now, Jesus tossed the devil into that a lake of fire, the same one. Keep in mind, this particular a lake of fire exists during the millennium reign of Jesus Christ. This happens directly after the thousand year reign. And before the thousand year reign, Jesus put the beast and the false prophet 
into the lake of fire. That's what we just read. Now that the thousand years is over, the devil is released, it's over. Jesus tossed the devil into the same lake of fire that the beast and the false prophet is. Where is this place at? <laughs> Where is this place? Where? Is a where is the a lake of fire? Where is the lake of fire? The Bible is very specific on making sure you know there's a difference. And if you don't rightly divide this, you're going to miss it. I'm going to ask one more time. Brittany talking about off grid. <laughs> Could the lake of fire that exists during the millennium reign of Christ that the devil, because remember, he was in chains in the abyss during the thousand year reign, right? Then after the thousand year reign, he was set free to, to see the earth a little bit. And then he was cast into the same lake of fire that the false prophet and the beast are in. No, the beast and the false prophet it's in the lake of fire. That's what we just read. Then, and keep in mind, the devil, he got put into the abyss in chains. Right? For the thousand years. That's in hell. That's a deeper part of hell. Bottomless. But the devil, that's where he was at during a thousand years. And then the false prophet and the beast was in a lake of fire. Hmm. Then after the thousand years, he was released to deceive the world for a little bit. Then he, he was cast into the same lake of fire as the false prophet and the beast. Where is a lake of fire and the lake of fire located? Right. It says the. Right. Absolutely. No, it's real. <laughs> it's real. It's most definitely real. <laughs> CSB. CSB translates words for modern language today. That's the only con I have with the CSB Bible. And that's the Bible I recommend to this day. But that's the only con I have, the translation of the words to make it understandable for us today. In the process of doing so, they take out important words. Word for word translation, word for word, King James Version is the best. Word for word. Verse adding Taken away, Christian Standard Bible is the best. So you got to cross-reference. You got to go to the original language and see, okay, what word was actually used there? And the actual word that was used was A, not the. So you got to go back to the original language to get the actual word. Got to do your own translating sometimes. <laughs> so there's some more homework. First, everlasting, is there a difference between everlasting fire and eternal fire? Second, where is the lake of fire and where is a lake of fire? Or is it the same? Could it be that the lake of fire, I'm, I'm trying to help you out, could be on earth? All right. <laughs> Earth might be 
turn into it whenever they have after the tribulation period probably. <laughs> Did you notice that the lack of fire exists during the millennium reign? Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 and 10. The lack of fire exists during the millennium reign. Revelation chapter 20, 7 and 10. They just said it could be. That's what we got to study. Give y'all something to think about. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is, at, is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. You play with God if you want to. You can play all you want to. You don't just, we ain't just hurt for nothing. We ain't intelligently designed this way, just cause. Don't be no fool. There is a hell. The much praying you do, just know there's a hell too. And they praying in hell right now trying to get up out of there. So y'all, y'all, so he just read Revelations 27 through 10, right? And you see that the lake of fire exists during the 1,000 year reign, right? You see that, right? Real quick before I continue the lack of fire. Y'all remember last study? I said that Jesus will be present in hell while folks are being tormented with fire and brimstone. Y'all remember that? Yes. Did y'all cross-examine me to see if that was true or not? I know you didn't. Brittany said, what's the four corners of the earth? I heard him read that. Study it. The four corners of the earth, let me help you out. North, south, east, and west. That's what I ain't just going to stop the winds from blowing. North, south, east, and west. I'll give you a jump start on your study on the four corners. North, south, east, and west. <laughs> So, let me give you the, the, the Bible verse, because I wanted y'all to, to study it on your own to see if you can get it. Let's go to Revelations 14 and 10. Hopefully, y'all will try to figure out these answers. Revelations 14 and 10, just real quick, before I forget it. Ready? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And in the presence of who? The Lamb. I was wrong because I didn't add everybody else to the equation. I forgot to add the holy angels. So Jesus ain't going to be by himself. He's going he to be standing like this here. And his angels are going to be right there in the prisons in while they burn in fire. That's saying he uh, in the midst. Because what you're saying, that to me, standing, standing, standing like you stand, you know, just from your illustration, that's in the midst. I mean, I, when he say the presence, you know, he could be, they could be floating above. And, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I just don't see him. I mean, I don't, I don't get in the midst of it, you know what I'm saying, from this scripture. In the I, presence. But in the presence though, you know what I'm saying, if I'm, I'm on the stairway, I'm in your presence. You know what I'm saying, well, I'm, I, 
with God, with angels, of course, they gonna be, you know, you can fly all that, uh, we, we gonna get to the heaven stuff and all this. Uh, all right. Going back through walls stuff you talking about. Yeah, we're going through walls. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got, we got to test that later. We tell the boy. And the mist is like close proximity. Yeah, but yeah, to me, to me, I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be like in the, in the lake with him, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like he's going to be, you know, floating above, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does the word presence mean? Like, we in each other's presence right now, right? But to get out of each other's presence, we have to actually leave this house. We can be in the same house. If, they, if I'm outside, I'm not in y'all's presence. But if I'm in the house, I'm in the presence of everybody in here. I got to be in the facility of. Let's look at the definition of presence. You see how mighty our king is. I created this. This can't touch me. I'm the designer of this. Brittany say the same place. The Bible say to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Where is the Lord? In heaven. Let's the definition. The state or fact of existing, occurring, or being present in a place or thing. So that let us know. He right there. Let's go to another Bible. Let's go to another translation. Let's read the, um, let's read the, um, what's a good one? Um, um, what is it? Amplified version. CSB. Let's read different versions. Let's see how other translators translate the word presence. CSB, Amplified, New Living. Let's see how they translated that word, that verse. God's wrath, which is poured full strength into the cup of his angels. He will be tormented with fire and suffer in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. What are the... 14 and 10. Drink the wine of God's wrath, which is poured full strength into the cup of his anger. He will be tormented with fire and suffer in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. <laughs> in the sight. You got to be there to see it. Unless he uses some FaceTime. He created FaceTime, you know what I mean? Like, we ain't creating nothing. But the scripture says, in the presence of the, of the Lamb and the holy angels. Study that and see what the word present mean. I could be wrong. But to me, my interpretation of presence is the same interpretation as if when we die, we're going to be absent from the body and be in the presence of the Lord. Mist, too. Definition in mist is in the middle of. I was, I was going off your illustration. Your illustration was in the middle of, which is in the mist. And in the presence is, you know, it's, that's, two different, that's two different things. So. Mist in the middle, presence. He's still going to be there. Y'all remember also I stated that people are going to be like, that's the devil who caused all this? Y'all remember I said that last time? Did y'all see how accurate that was? Hold on, Deja put a scripture up. They see what it reads. She said, present means being right there. She got a biblical answer for presence. Let's go to it. First, Stacy. Chapter 4 and 17. All right, Deja, let's go. Let me go to it with you. First Thessy, chapter 4 and 17. Hmm. 
What version? What version are you reading? She said we're going to be caught up to the presence of the Lord. All right, let's hear it. She said, KJ. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. NCS. <laughs> We're going to meet the Lord in the sky. That's what that's saying. Well, presence means you there. That's undeniable. There's a lot of present stuff in here. Well, let's keep going. That's right. We're going to be in his presence and with him. We ain't just going to be in his presence. We're going to be with him. That's right. But y'all remember what I said about that, right? About how people are going to be like, that's the devil causing all this stuff and this and this. Remember that? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, 16 and 17. Isaiah Chapter 14, 16, and 17. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? <laughs> is, this the, is this him? This the one got me fornicating? This the guy? This it? You gotta be kidding me. I'm on the phone all night with him or her because of him? <laughs> now what does the lake of fires want to get those answers? Well, I want to see if y'all had the answer. But I already knew y'all didn't. Well, we got two more questions, and we got other questions I put in the group in the text message. Hopefully, y'all saw that. And we got two more to add. Now, what is the lake of fire? The lake of fire, Terry, is simply this it's the second death, a place where you die again. Without dying. The lack of fire will consume and swallow up debt and hell with ease and no problem. Death and hell will feel the wrath of God in the lack of fire. What is the lack of fire? The second death. Don't let lack of fire picture in your mind an actual lake full of fire. Our God speak <laughs> with illustrations so we can get a, a physical picture. The lake of fire is simply this. Second death. To be very easy to answer. A lake of fire, could that be on earth? It's gonna be a hard study. Let's go to scripture to prove this. Revelations 20 and 14.
<laughs> Revelations 20 and oh, 20 and 14 and and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death this is the second death this is the second death death and Hades was cast into the lake of fire this is a the second death. A place where you die again without dying. The lake of fire is designed and built for eternal punishment. For all that has rejected the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and for Satan and his fallen angels. We know that to be true because the beast, the false prophet, and the devil himself was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire, watch this. The lake of fire, Terry, exists even after everything was completely destroyed by God. You know, you just think when, when you, I, I thought once you died, you know what I'm saying, immediately it's heaven and hell. And I used to feel like hell was already up underneath us. You know what I'm saying? You're going to hell, you make that transition, and boom, you're burning. You know what I'm saying? If you pass and go to heaven, boom, you up there, you know what I'm saying? Them golden streets and man, someone until I got older to learn, but I always thought hell was already. I mean, now we know hell and lake of fire is two different things, but I used to think that, you know, that lake of fire already existed. <laughs> it's already going on as soon as you get up out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Being honest, I just learned the, uh, that hell getting cast to like five. God damn it, this great. <laughs> if the hell was like five, God damn it, we thought that year. The lake of fire exists. <laughs> the lake of fire exists right now, just ain't nobody in it right now. The lake of fire exists, but nobody's in the lake of fire right now. Until judge, not until judgment. It's sitting there full of power. And it's far away from God. You understand, God's presence is so potent, like, you can't even escape his, his glory. But the lake of fire is so far away, it escapes. <laughs> and notice that Jesus and his holy, his holy angels are going to be in the presence while they in hell it didn't say the lake of fire <laughs> it didn't say the lake of fire did it say the lake of fire it said hell didn't it say hell or something like that which is poured out to be tormented with fire and brimstone. They didn't say, he didn't say fire and brimstone. That can mean a lot. King James. Now, the lack of fire exists even after God completely destroyed everything. Y'all got that? When he come back, he destroyed everything. Remember we read that his, the earth and the heavens fled away from him. Everything got burnt up, incinerated, everything gone. But the lake of fire and the great white throne and us. Huh? That's, that's the question. Watch this. This I can't even I can't even map this out. All right, look. I'm really giving you the answer. I'm not helping y'all nothing else. Don't let the word everlasting trick you. 
it's tricking you because you're not going to the scriptures to get the definition of everlasting. You're going to your thoughts of everlasting. <laughs> so the lack of fire legs, that's going to exist when everything is gone. So I don't, look, I don't, look, this is all going to be there. Y'all ready? The white throne, the dead, the lake of fire in the middle of nothingness. The entire universe has been dissolved and burnt up. Don't exist no more. The only thing that's left is the great white throne. The dead and the lake of fire. The eternal lake of fire. Hope y'all catching these little nuggets. <laughs> you gonna be standing, Terry, when you when you're in front of the white throne, great white throne. You're gonna be standing in the middle of nothingness. You gotta let me, let me know what that look like. <laughs> then watch this. Then everything will be cast into the lake of fire, where the devil, the beast, and the false prophet is. Right? And then everybody whose name is not written in the book of life is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Into the eternal, eternal lake of fire. Eternal. <laughs> Let's read about it. Revelations 20, 11 through 15. We almost done. What is BC? It's. Hold on, let me see Deja answer. Oh, Deja said, whose name is not found in the book of life? That's right, Deja. Bronca didn't put me on the screen. I didn't know you said something. <laughs> whose name is not found in the book of life? That's right. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire, too. Matter of fact, everybody who's in front of the great white throne, they name it in them. The book of life. Oh, they, the they, they in another book. Right, it's a it's a book that kept record of everything Darlene Perkins have done in her entire life. And you're gonna be judged off that. That's gonna let you know your level of punishment. But only be good, right? <laughs> huh? <laughs> so when so when when you're in front of the great white throne, you're not you're not in the book of in the book of life, right? So when you stand before God and you're in front of the great white throne. So all the stuff you've done is recorded in those books. Oh, you ain't going to stand in front of the great right throne? <laughs> so, so, so the people that ain't going to be in heaven, right, they're going to be in the lake of fire, they got another book they in. They got their name in another book, and that's, this book records everything they have done in their life. So you're already condemned to damnation. But God is still so good. He's still so good that Alexis ain't going to burn the same way Terry going to burn. Huh? <laughs> huh? So it's different levels of punishment. You see me, I'm going to be already raptured. I'm going to be, actually, I'm going to be, you know, you understand me. Wherever he want me at. <laughs> I ain't going to debate him either. You want me where? Uh, all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> you want to send me over there? You want me to, uh, all right, yeah, you want me to send Terry on if that's what you want. I'm telling you. That's her. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, which were written in the books according to their works. 
and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And if you read the verse right above 11, you'll see that there is a day and night in the lake of fire. Let's see, let's read number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Did y'all see where it said the sea gave up the dead? I'm trying to help y'all see this. It says, and the sea gave up the dead, right? Let me see. What number is that? And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, right? Then watch this. And dead and hell. That's three different areas. <laughs> the sea. Y'all got some homework. I don't know. All I know is. The sea gave up the dead. These people is standing in front of the white throne. <laughs> huh? And then they said that was our judge. That was thought. You, you read it. So let's take my word for everything. And again, the lake of fire is the second death. I hope y'all making the correlation. So you can understand these answers. And everyone that continues in your self-loving ways, these practices, you're going to die again. You're going to die twice. How can I die again if I'm dead? Because dead don't mean you don't exist no more. Dead mean depart, separate. You don't die. You're going to be in paradise, in heaven, eternal life, happy with the king, or you're going to be in torment, hell, with the devil. And, and people be like, is this, this is the guy? This him? Man. He calls all this ruckus him? This the man? The Bible just called, called him a man. This the man? That's what it said in the book Isaiah 14. This the man? So you know he ain't no female. It's a man deceiving a female. Oh, God ain't real. I believe in the energy in the universe. I'm connected to the universe. So it gives me power. Really? The same universe is going to burn up. <laughs> Some power. Only the only one that can redeem you from the second death. Only one. Who's that, mama? Jesus Christ. Now, why? It ain't just any part of Jesus. It ain't the, the part of Jesus, you know, him healing the sick. Not that part. Not when he got baptized in water. Not that part either. It's only one part. The blood. You understand me? The blood atonement sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's it. Nothing else. And once you accept that, oh man, you good from this. I'm going to give you scriptures. I got three minutes. Let me finish this one. The second death is eternal separation from the love, blessing, and benefits of God. That's really a minor. The second death is worse than that. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna be nowhere near the glory of God. Oh, verse 13. <laughs> the second dead is another way of speaking of eternal judgment. Okay. Accepting the DBR is what saved you. Now let me explain the lack of fire. Or the second debt. I know we're sleeping. It's been an hour. 
and some change. I'm going to wrap this up. Let me explain this. Let's go to Revelations 21 and 8. See, y'all scared of Revelations. Y'all scared of the book of Revelations. You understand me? Put me in. You understand? You understand? Huh? All through the Holy Spirit, though, ain't got nothing to do with me. I promise you. Let's hear it. But the fearful and unbelieving <clears throat> and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idols and liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All lies, excuse me. Burn with fire and brimstone. Has anybody in this house ever lied before? Yes. Oh, we, so we all are guilty of lying, right? Yeah. What did what did the scripture just say for our liars? <laughs> Everybody that told a lie gonna have their part in the lake of fire. You're not exempt. You understand that? We are worthy and guilty. Of sin against a holy God. And if you don't get that sin blotted out, your punishment is just. I don't care if it's a little white lie. You can't white lie with God. You know how we be playing around, little, little white lies playing around? Who took that drink? Uh, I didn't do it. You know you did it, but you just really joking. You still lied. It will have its place where in the in the second dead. All liars. Don't just look at the whoremongers. I'm talking about you liars. Don't look at the faggots and gays. Look at you, the liar. We need Christ, y'all. You feel me? Without him, we're nothing. We're doomed. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What does I believe in? That Christ died, died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. That is it, y'all. Nothing else. Once you accept that, once you hear that truth, that gospel of your salvation, you are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And guess what you start doing? You start walking right. Start moving right. Start talking right. You don't even want to entertain anything wrong. You start thanking them the right way. Now your prayers don't change. You don't ask them for nothing else no more. You just end up thanking. <laughs> you start being kind out of nowhere. You're normally a mean person, but now you're nice. <laughs> You, man, you let them talk to you like that? Man, I don't know why. Normally, I would have went off on I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> you're a new creation, a new creature. And you're going to have your stay in heaven. Just wait till we get on heaven. But if you don't, you're going to burn in hell, and that too going to burn your selfish, proper ways. You liar. You murderer. You unbeliever. You know, it's a lot of things we do that's sinful. So when you don't accept Christ, Terry, you are those things because you have been a part of it. Me too. You understand me? The second death is where you're going to be at forever and ever. Whoever don't accept Jesus Christ, that will have they stay in the lake of fire. But the ones who accept Jesus, DBR, will not be hurt by the lake of fire, mama. Revelations 2 and 11. We got one more verse and we done. Revelations 2 and 11. I was going to finish this so I, so I can end the hell, this part of the hell and go into torment. If you accept Christ, you won't be touched or harmed by that lake of fire. And, you, and while he's he looking that up, y'all know how the Hebrew Israelites, when they, when they describe God in the Bible, and they talk about his foot is like brass. I'm going to explain to y'all what that means. I'm explaining to y'all why his foot is like brass. 
Because remember, Jesus said, God said he's going to put Jesus' enemy under his foot. And he's going to walk on top of, you know, and, and it's going to be fire. Hold on, I don't want to give you too much. I don't want to give you too much. I don't want to give you too much. I'm going to give you the truth, what it really means. It ain't talking about foot like bronze like because he's a black man. We get the truth in that. Let's hear it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. You hear that, mama? He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear. What about he that hath an ear, let him read? Well, when you read, don't you hear? When you're reading something, you don't hear nothing? Oh, because I, I hear a lot when I read. I hear it loud and clear. Let me do it. Okay. <laughs> also read Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Once you with Christ and you accept his death, burial, and resurrection, stop running, saying you want to go here, go there, all the doggone time. The devil trying to get you to run from this truth. You're going to reign with Christ for a thousand years. Don't worry about the second death. It's going to be a second death, y'all. Everybody in here is going to die. I just I ask God, if it's his will, let me be here when he come back in the clouds. I would like to witness that in this body. I ask him that. I don't, you know, I just I, I that's the other kind of stuff I ask. I ask for. You understand me? I don't ask to help me pay my, my, my bills because he told me just seek him, he's gonna take care of everything else. I stopped doing that a long time ago. I've stopped trying to pay my tie my way up to, you know, I've been stopped that. <laughs> I stopped tithing my way up to something, I'm, you know what I mean? Nah, I just focus on Christ. And he said he going to supply everything I need. All right? Brittany said, when you accept the DVR, you do better and live better with Jesus being first. Absolutely. All right. We got a lot of homework. All right? I put some group, some text in the group. You have time? You know, feel free to tackle it. If not, that's fine. But I challenge you to cross-examine me, get in your book, and study. Become that manager, right? And get some questions answered. Number one, is there a difference between everlasting fire and eternal fire? All right? Nine of us said no, only two said yes. I think one want to go back on that answer, but hey. <laughs> Once you pop, the bond don't stop. The second one is... Where is a lake of fire and where is the lake of fire? Right? And what is the sea? Because it's like the sea gave up the dead. And 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 what, what is the sea? All right. The sea is holding the dead. The sea holding the dead? Hmm. Remember the book of Revelations have words in there to get, give you a picture. All right. So I text these in the group. And, and um, if y'all want to give it a shot, go for it. And then we'll, um, we'll um, go over it possibly next, next Bible study or, <clears throat> or sometime in the future. But I really would like for y'all to study and see if you can get the answer. We got one more part of this where we talk about Jesus' feet being bronze and how that don't mean a black man. It means something else. We know when the Bible describes Jesus, her white as wool, you know, a lot of people, especially Hebrew Israelites, take that as this is the color or race of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you the Bible. It teaches something differently especially when it comes to his feet being as bronze, especially when it's talking about what he's wearing. 
a cloak with no seams in it. On how Jesus Christ is a representation of the universe. How it was designed. Is the tattoo a metaphor? I gotta give y'all to say, I can't give y'all milk every time. All right, who got questions? All right, what you got? This is class, this is not church, and just know you're talking to a biblist. <laughs> you understand that? When you come to your questions, no, this is a biblist you're talking to. Full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Terry, we know what you're full of. Huh? I would hope the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's hear it, Brooke. The question is, where if they don't get the second debt, you talking about the people in hell. So if the people in hell they do not get the second debt, since hell gonna be cast to the lake of fire, where will they go? Everybody that's not with Christ will go to the lake of fire, the second debt. Everybody. They get judged off their works. They're not getting judged to see if they deserve the lack of fire. No, they're going to the lack of fire. They get judged off the works they did. Like the one that destroyed the Twin Towers might be punished more than the one that stole a piece of candy. But both of them getting that fire. Kind of like today. If you're going to rob a bank, you're going to get more trouble than you going to the convenience store stealing a bag of chips. But you're still going to get punished. Yes. So, um, you're in front of a business. When the people in hell get judged, are they exact, um, determined which level? Like, are they going to be judged? Absolutely. Which level of fire, second day. Absolutely. But here's the thing. Don't think of it as they getting a break. They're not going to be in, in the lake of fire saying, look, they burn it worse than we are. Ain't no luxury in hell. Ain't no, ain't no luxury in high highs in, in the lake of fire. Just because you're getting it lighter than that person don't mean that you're going to be able to look back and say, dang, they have it worse than me. They don't exist. Ain't no happiness. Ain't no relief. They don't exist. Fire is... Say it again. Fire, fire. fire is fire. Whether you stick your hand, get a lighter and do this, or be in a burning house, you still gonna get it. You still, ah, ooh. You know how you, if you light your leg and put something on it and you set it on fire, you know what I'm talking about? Like that. What? Well, well, I'm trying to get you different levels of fire. Uh huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Who got questions? Ain't no, ain't no relaxation in hell. Are you kidding me? You better not think you're going to have the opportunity to look at somebody else and be like, dang. You got to be kidding me. Daenerys said, I thought all sin was equal. Why is punishment different? Well, here's the thing. All sin is not equal. Jesus told Pilate, because Pilate didn't want to sentence him on the cross, Jesus said, look, man, don't worry. It's the one that sent you to me has the greater sin. So all sin isn't equal. Different punishments, the punishment level is different. And Jesus talked about that too when we get into our Out of Darkness and Gnashing of the Teeth series, which is next. Because we associate Out of Darkness and Gnashing of the Teeth with being hell. Now one time, Jesus did use Welling and Gnashing of the Teeth associated with fire he did do that but for the other parts it had nothing to do with hell and i'm gonna show it to you in scripture and out of darkness as well all right who got more who got questions it's a good dialogue it looks good when we dialogue the way the viewers on youtube can see that we dialogue they feel comfortable to ask questions in the comments keep the algorithm up you feel me somehow we gained five new, four new subscribers we just upload a video, we start gaming subscribers. <laughs> we got 82 subscribers. 
Feeling good about it too. Quince, <laughs> I had uh, to me, I I, I you I, I put it in, in the same context as immune. People think oh, I'm being held so long, I'm gonna get immune to it. And why he said it'll never be quenched. I feel like he's, he's basically saying you'll never get immune to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Gonna, I always feel how it feels. Right. You're gonna have a body that's designed to make sure you feel that torture. <laughs> You're not going to be in hell with this body. This body right here is going to the dust, and that is it's it. It's going to burn. Well, it's going to be resurrected. It ain't going to burn. I said that wrong. These bodies are going to be resurrected into, our, into glorified bodies. Wait, I got a question. Now, let's hear it. So, whenever they say, um, the, the dead will rise, or when, whenever they say that they're going to be resurrected, does that actually mean that you're going to be resurrected? Absolutely. The question is, when they say the dead gonna rise, does that mean do they actually come back to life? Yes. The Bible talks about when Jesus died on the cross and people in the grave got up and then they was able to go into the towns. You remember that verse? Oh, they gonna, they gonna, get, they gonna get up. Bodies. Yes, sir. Big body. But the sinful ones, you know, the ones that want to continue to have sex on their mind all the time. I say sex a lot, that's what it is. I ain't sitting here. I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. You go to work, make money. For sex. Impress that gal. And you women, y'all get so deceived by us so easily. We love you so. I love you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Not all women. But that's why I look. We got to rely on the Holy Spirit who indwells in us. Ain't nobody perfect but Christ. But be perfect. Do your best to be perfect. You do your best. You walk out of here, you do your best to be perfect. How you be perfect? Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor like thyself. Daenerys said, so was out of darkness related to the abyss? No. Out of darkness is not related to the abyss. Why was the devil in chains in the abyss? Was he too powerful? The devil is very powerful. But he, I mean, he's like a little microscopic nothing compared to God. <laughs> but to compare to us, absolutely he's powerful. <laughs> you understand me? Out of, out of darkness is not related to the abyss. And next teachings, we're going to go over out of darkness and weeping and gnashing of the teeth associated to hell. All right. All right, that's it. Then we're going to put an end to the questions. That was a good dialogue. I hope that you guys really take time out to go back and watch these videos. I know Terry do a lot and study them. And, you know, parking lot questions. Uh, use Bible apps like eSword. eSword is a good Bible app. eSword. Download eSword. E as an elephant, then the word sword, S-W-O-R-D, sword, download it. That thing costs like $4. And it, it helps me a lot when I'm searching up words, like we talk about the parables. I just typed in the word parable, and it showed me every verse in the Bible that had the word parable in it. And I just went and looked at every parable that Jesus said, and that's where they came from. Holy Spirit directed me to do that. All right. See you guys. God said the same. Next Bible study, what's today? Monday, Wednesday. And we're going to the, put an end to this part of the hell series and start another part of it. All right? May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all through his grace. Until next time.